So, um, all right, let me, let me start. Uh, uh, today, uh, it'll be, uh, it is wonderful to have a, a speaker, uh, Dr. Flatov. Uh, he's been working on the, the uh, ensemble yes. VIP uh, for more than 20 years. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's done. Okay. So, so. so the uh, ensemble VFT is uh, something like something. Oh, it's uh, Anna. It's coming. All right, uh, Anna. So uh, traditionally, the original formulation of Kohn-Sham theory, uh, we all know, uh, that's what uh, that's really the most popular density functional theory formulation. That's what we everybody uses these days. Uh, but then the, there are some people uh, recognize that there are some uh, uh, there are just some problems with the uh, original Kohn-Sham uh, formulation. So they investigated and they found that uh, they need uh, uh, more the, more than the, just the uh, Kohn-Sham what the Kohn-Sham you know, was doing. So that's what uh, they call uh, the ensemble DFT. Uh, there are uh, many uh, developers in the world, uh, the ensemble DRT uh, the, uh, uh, community, but uh, I think that uh, Michael is the, uh, the leader. And he is the person who actually uh, uh, do the, uh, the coded the, uh, into a, a real practical um, program so that the, uh, people can actually uh, uh, really see the advantage of ensemble DRT. Uh, I think that uh, uh, Dr. Filatov is the, the, really the, uh, he is the, uh, the most, uh, uh, the leader in this field. So he, he uh, so he's, he called it the Rex, uh, but it's a part of ensemble DRT idea. Uh, so uh, this will resolve many of the problems of the uh, original formulation of Kohn-Sham theory. Uh, it is uh, great to have him today. So let's welcome. Okay, it's all yours. I think. Sure. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, Michael needs. He said he told me that he needs three days to talk about at least uh, three days right. to talk about yeah. what he wants to talk. Plenty. So uh, well, we well. have plenty of time. So okay, it's all yours. All right. Good day, everyone. Uh, nice to see you here in our meeting room and uh, as uh, professor introduced i will tell about some basic aspects mostly because it's uh, not possible even within three days to tell about all the detail of implementation and theory behind the uh, methodology which i was developing already since 20 years back and uh, uh, as was already said I hope you can see my screen, right? Yes. Yeah, great. Um, uh, this methodology is based on ensemble density functional theory, not standard Kohn-Sham DFT. And Kohn-Sham DFT, as you may know, is based on single slatter determinant as a reference, so to speak, wave function. However, ensemble DFT is more similar to multi-reference methodologies in uh, wave function theory and uh, this ensemble representation, it offers a number of advantages. Uh, in particular, it provides um, accurate description of the non-dynamic electron correlation, known also as static electron correlation, which is important for describing bone breaking, bi-radicals and polyradicals, uh, various symmetry forbidden reactions, and uh, magnetic coupling between open shell centers for example, in, uh, in metal complexes. Uh, this is for the ground states. And for the, very, uh, for the excited states, it offers a way of obtaining variational, not response, excited states. So we uh, can obtain excited state pretty much like in uh, state average CAS SCF or multi-state CAS PT2, which enables proper description of crossings, avoided crossings and conical intersections between the ground and excited states and also it includes a relaxation of the, uh, of the one electron functions, so orbitals, 
in the excited state, which is important for proper description of conjugated pi systems and for the description of charge transfer excitation. So uh, I will uh, gradually introduce the whole theory. So I begin from afar. So first I will introduce uh, ensemble DFT and its implementation for the ground electronic states. Then I will describe how it is implemented for the excited states. And after that, we, if stars align, of course, we will have some small uh, computer practicum where I will show you how to do these uh, ensemble calculations uh, using existing implementation of the methodology in the Games US program. Well, let's begin from the ground states. So the main uh, topic in quantum chemistry is, of course, oh, all right, first, the content I forgot to introduce. So first I will introduce the dynamic correlation, uh, electron correlation, dynamic and static, and what is uh, the concept of it. So this is pretty uh, much basic uh, presentation. Then I will switch to density description of density functional theory. I will refresh the main facts about density functional theory, standard concham DFT, as well as ensemble DFT, this will be a bit a rudimentary description, but I will try to present the main ideas rather than formulae behind, the, <clears throat> behind these concepts, behind these methodologies. And then I will describe practical implementation of ensemble DFT in the form of uh, REX method. So spin restricted ensemble referenced consham method. Uh, first for the ground states and later I will uh, describe it. Uh, it's a implementation for the excited state. Now let's begin with the first topic. So electron correlation, what is this? Usually physicists don't care about that because for, from physical standpoint, if bomb blows, it blows. It doesn't matter whether there will be electron correlation or not. And uh, the first, let's say uh, for the first time, uh, the concept of electron correlation was probably introduced by Per Olof Lovdin in a series of papers which he published in Physical Review. This is probably one of the cornerstones of quantum chemistry besides the very first book, which was called Quantum Chemistry uh, by Hans Hellmann. But uh, unfortunately that book was first printed in two languages. Uh, the first was Russian and then it was German, not in English, not available. But quantum chemistry in that book, he already introduced many concepts we use in, uh, in our branch of science. But anyway, electron correlation, concept of electron correlation was introduced by uh, Per Olof Lovdin and he defined it as difference between the <clears throat> independent particles model. So we can carry out calculations such as Hartree-Fock. This is independent particles approximation. In the finite basis set, we can extrapolate to infinite basis set. Oh, should be infinite, of course, complete basis set. Oh, here, complete basis set. And the difference between the uh, self-consistent field of Hartree-Fock energy obtained, for example, with finite basis set and post-Hartree-Fock treatment, which includes the electron correlation, is called correlation energy. So it will be finite basis or complete basis. We can extrapolate both to the complete basis set and uh, we will obtain some numeric value. Uh, so some reminder about uh, simple uh, independent particles model. So H2 is usually a good example of a uh, good representative of any molecule. So in uh, within simple molecular orbital picture, we describe uh, electronic structure of H2 as doubly occupied bonding molecular orbital of sigma G symmetry because it has D infinity H symmetry group. There is also, if we use minimal basis set, imagine that we have two atomic orbitals, chi A and chi B, we can make uh, in-phase and out-of-phase combinations of the two atomic orbitals, which correspond to bonding and antibonding molecular orbitals. So if we construct a slatter determinant as approximation for the wave function of the ground state, in this way, in the usual way, A is anti-asymmetrizer. Then we can open up the uh, 
work out the determinant and uh, we obtain the following description where we will see that we have a configuration which corresponds to covalent structure electronic structure you see that there is one orbital one atomic orbital on atom a and another on atom b and same uh, at atom a atom b so we have <coughs> Uh, the same, um, let's say, covalent configuration in this uh, wave function, and also it contains a unique configuration, the Hartree-Fock wave function, where both electrons occupy the same orbital, like electron with alpha and with beta spins are sitting in the atomic orbital A, S A, or atomic orbital B. So uh, the standard. Hartree-Fock wave function, it collects both covalent and ionic configurations with equal weights. And these weights are fixed. And in fact, this is uh, bad for describing uh, exactly what we want to uh, introduce, the electron correlation. In particular, it will, be, uh, it will, it will give us wrong dissociation limit. Well, uh, if we occupy, however, the other orbital, anti-bonding combination of the atomic orbitals with two electrons, so doubly excited electronic configuration like here, then we will, uh, when we work out this uh, <coughs> slightly determinant, we will see that we still have the same covariant configuration in this wave function and the same ionic configuration. However, they have well, covariant configuration have inverse sign, minus instead of plus, like it was in the doubly occupied bonding m -O. So an idea would be if we combine them both, where in, 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 in such a form where lambda is some sort of variational parameter, then we may hope to obtain at least proper dissociation limit, when, because in the dissociation limit, when there is no interaction between the two orbitals, we hope that uh, the two slatter determinants be become degenerate and therefore energetically and therefore th these coefficients will become same. Lambda for, for normalization, one divided by square root of two, universe square root of two. And indeed, if we combine them both with these coefficients, we see that only covalent configuration remains in this wave function. So this is a very simple example of uh, generalized valence bond for this wave function, perfect spin pairing wave function. So GVBPP, so-called. So I, this is only a reminder of uh, uh, basic facts about description of uh, simple molecule, simplest possible molecule, a hydrogen molecule. Right, uh, now I want to show you how electron correlation manifests itself in the wave function. So of course it is not possible even for simplest molecule like heart, uh, uh, dihydrogen to visualize the wave function because it's six dimensional. However, we can visualize a so-called conditional probability density, which is defined as, the, uh, as probability to find, uh, as, let's say probability distribution of electron two provided that electron one resides at specific position. And in this cartoon, position of electron one is given by this red dot. And you see that from, well, this, this probability distribution is constructed using the exact wave function, which was obtained as early as 1933. And you see that the uh, distribution of the second electron, it reacts to the position of the uh, first electron. So it tries to avoid the first electron. Second electron tries to avoid the first electron while the first electron moves, right? And uh, here the static pictures for the same. So when the uh, first electron is at one end of the molecule, then the second electron has greater probability to be found at another, at opposite end of the molecule and vice versa when the first electron it is at the let's say right end of the molecule, then the second electron will go to the left. <clears throat> so this is intuitively a correct picture of electron correlation because electrons are charged particles. They used to 
repulse each other. And therefore, this electronic repulsion leads to this non-symmetric distribution of the uh, uh, probability density. All right. However, if we look at the uh, self-consistent field Hartree-Fock wave function and construct the same probability to find second electron provided that the first electron is at R, then we see that there is nothing like that. So uh, this breathing of a function going up and down because I did not, was too lazy to normalize this probability distribution simply. I made these cartoons quite some time ago, maybe 12, 14 years ago. Don't remember one exactly, but <clears throat> you see, there is no change in the shape of the distribution of the second electron. So second electron does not see the first electron, right? So this is a disadvantage of the self-consistent field methodology. And uh, this disadvantage can be quite easily cured by switching over from single determinant to multi-determinant representation for the wave function. If we introduce instead of Hartree-Fock wave function, uh, uh, GVBPP wave function or simple two configurational wave function with variational parameter lambda and obtain a uh, probability of, well, that will be for GVBPP, uh, probability of finding second electron provided that the first electron is at R, we see that generally we capture the, 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 the picture of the electron correlation. The main, <coughs> uh, let's say, consequence of it, the Coulomb repulsion, which leads to uh, asymmetric distribution of the second electron when the first electron is somewhere uh, in space, right? So that means that configuration mixing, even the simplest form configuration mixing, already brings in some electron correlation. Well, and this is a consequence of the fact that uh, the ground state wave function is constructed from two bonding orbitals, right? And bonding orbitals don't have node between the atoms. Doubly excited state is constructed from two antibonding orbitals. And uh, antibonding orbitals, they do have node between the uh, atoms, and therefore <clears throat> uh, its probability distribution is anti-symmetric, so to speak. When we mix the symmetric and anti-symmetric probability distributions from both wave functions, we obtain non-symmetric distribution. That's, uh, that's consequence of the configurational mixing in simple uh, GVBPP wave function or at the wave function level. Uh, in fact, uh, some part of electron correlation is captured even at the Hartree-Fock level. This is called Fermi correlation. The Fermi correlation uh, originates due to the Pauli principle, so wave function anti-symmetry. So if we take, for example, triplet state, wave function of the triplet state, exact wave function, and construct again, pro, uh, pro conditional probability of finding second electron, then we see that the second electron tries to avoid very strongly the, the first electron. Same will be produced by sim simple single determinant wave function constructed at the Hartree-Fock level for the triplet state. There may be tiny difference between the shapes of these peaks, which will be due to the dynamic electron correlation, so due to Coulomb repulsion between the electrons, but the main essence of the Fermi correlation is captured at the Hartree-Fock level. However, as we saw in the previous slide, uh, uh, the Hartree-Fock uh, methodology or uh, SCF methodology does not capture uh, the, uh, the uh, electron correlation due to Coulomb repulsion of the electrons. Now, another example where we can see that some amount of correlation, electron correlation is introduced is, uh, for example, for open shell singlet state, there is no single determinant wave function for this state, which would have all proper uh, symmetry properties, such as spin symmetry. And uh, the wave function for even simplest wave function at the CF level for open shell singlet state is two configurational. There are two electronic configurations spin up, spin down, spin down, spin up on, on different atoms, for example. 
But uh, in this case, if we compare with the exact wave function, this simple wave function still captures uh, some electron correlation. Although the shape of the peak may be slightly different. And this is again due to absence of the correlation due to Coulomb repulsion between the electrons. So uh, what I would like to illustrate with this is that simple configurational mixing introduces the electron correlation into the description, although this description may be not exact. And now let's uh, refresh how uh, electron correlation is described typically at the formal level, at least in and also in the computations. So one of the first, let's say, formalization of uh, ways to compute uh, correlation energy was done by Octai Sinano Glue. So it was already yeah, in 60s, sometime after Lovdin. Well, electron correlation following Lovdin is defined as <coughs> the difference between the mean field or SCF or Hartree Fock energy and the exact energy. We can use intermediate normalization here. It's no harm, so called intermediate normalization. We have SCF function on the left and exact function on the right. Provided that the two wave functions are very close uh, to one another, so their overlap integral is close to one, then we can uh, <coughs> write the correlation energy, the energy difference in this way. And uh, oh, we can always renormalize hartree fock function such that this condition is fulfilled. But it works the best when uh, the exact wave function is accurately reproduced by the SCF wave function, only in this case. Well, in this situation, we have simple perturbational expansion in terms of uh, doubly excited, triply excited, and so on configurations. You notice that single excitations are missing here. I will explain uh, why, why I can mention right away, because due to brilliant theorem, if we optimize the SCF wave function, then its uh, interaction with the <coughs> or matrix elements uh, between the, uh, our hartree fock wave function and single excitations from it will vanish. They will be zero. That corresponds to optimization, variation optimization of the SCF or mean field or hartree fock wave function. So, but this is very simple expression. Michael. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, but uh, uh, people can ask, give a question anytime. Yes, right? yeah, of course. Anytime uh, you're free to ask. Yeah, so Although please. I don't see your bit. hands at this moment, I need to say. I think that please go a little bit slow, slower. <laughs> right, right. I'm trying to be as slow yeah, as possible. Also, the, uh, there is a, the, the signs uh, of the Zoom, please remove. I think now it's gone. It was blocking part of your uh, screen, top part of oh, your screen. Oh, where, where was that? Yeah, now it's coming back. Yeah, yeah when you, yeah, yeah. Ah. You, uh, move it away from this screen. How can I move it away? Uh, oh, yeah, I, I, I moved it away. Yeah, I moved it to secondary screen. All right, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I, we I, have I, a two monitor, right? Right, indeed, yeah. indeed. Okay. I moved it. So, All right. uh, if you have uh, questions, uh, just uh, right now, it's fire on. away difficult to follow because of the, he's uh, talking about many equations, uh, but uh, they are the basics, but then many of you may not be familiar with. So uh, uh, let me slightly add, he's uh, trying to uh, explain the, uh, what the electron correlation is and what, or what would be the main source of it. And uh, then later maybe he would uh, uh, try to tell you how we can add electron correlation uh, efficiently. Uh, so any of you have a, uh, doesn't quite understand this equation, you can give a, give a question anytime. So it's okay. It, it's okay not to understand these <laughs> because this is a, um, you, don't, you don't look at these equations every day, right? So. <laughs> um, right, but uh, yes, uh, that, that's correct. So if you have questions, uh, fine. try, cool. ask right away. Oh, Fabio, hey, hi. I'm oh, here, right. thank you. Sorry, sorry, I'm, I will leave actually. It's all right. Mm, okay. All right. 
Welcome to the club. <laughs> anyway, what's interesting in this expansion for the exact wave function is that if we substitute this expansion into the expression for the correlation energy, we will see that only contributions for, from double excitations survive, right? Because why is that? Because the Hamiltonian has only pairwise interactions. Electron one, electron two, that's it. Electron I, electron J, and not a triple interactions, right? So that therefore <clears throat> all other terms between the, let's say ground state or reference state, uh, single determinant and because any- That operator is about just the two particles, right? It's yes. not, there's no three particle operator, right? Right, 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 yes. So yeah. that uh, yeah. all other contributions, so from say matrix elements between a hard three fork wave function and higher excitation than double, they will simply disappear. They will be zero. But, and it's tempting, yes, it's tempting to represent the whole correlation energy as a sum of pairwise uh, terms. And from the experience, it is known that all these terms are on the order of one electron volt approximately in organic systems. So you can easily uh, then define uh, or estimate correlation energy for specific molecule by uh, dividing all electrons into pairs in within the same orbitals and uh, then adding one electron volt per electron pair to the total energy. But uh, as you see, although only these matrix elements survive, the amplitudes here, they are dependent on all other amplitudes. So from triple excitations, from quadruple excitations and so on until infinity. So therefore it's not uh, accurate approximation if you simply truncate this expansion for the wave function only at the second order terms, you will lose. So, but can you use some sort of laser pointer uh, uh, there is no laser pointer as such in uh, in uh, that. But do you see that pointer? Yeah, I can see the pointer, but could you use it more actively? <laughs> more actively? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but all right. Yeah. Sometimes you use it. Sometimes you don't. All right, right. Uh, yes, because these amplitudes of uh, contributions, double excitation, for example, they are dependent on amplitudes of all other. <laughs> Uh, contributions into the wave function. We cannot truncate simply the uh, this expansion for the wave function and hope that we will correctly describe everything. So of course truncated expressions, they are computationally more tractable and quite often they are indeed truncated at the second order such as MP2 methodology, Merle Placid second order perturbation theory However, one needs to realize that in this case, these amplitudes of doubly excited configurations are simply not accurate enough. It captures some correlation energy, but not all of it. So in reality, we need to know all of them to be able to recover correlation energy at an accurate level. So, and there are many ways how uh, this perturbational expansion can be solved. One of them is coupled cluster and which is much more accurate than any other perturbational, uh, perturbational methodology, but is also based on, on this perturbational method, perturbational expansion. Right, so this is a description of the correlation energy provided that we have, let's say, a good overlap between the exact wave function and the, our, let's say, uh, zero order wave function, mean field wave function. Is this always the case? That is the question, and that is the big question, in fact. So typically, uh, situations